thanks for watching and today I would like to talk to you about one of my favorite facts in linear algebra which says the following if you want to solve ax equals to b so fact the general solution of ax equals to b is always of this form is of the form namely x equals to x naught plus xp where x naught is the general solution of ax equals to zero so which is sometimes called the null space of a plus a particular solution solution of ax equals b and let me illustrate this. So in theory, uh, it's useful to solve AX equals B, although uh, the point is it's already easy to solve AX equals B, so in practice this is unnecessary, but it's very useful in theory. So just very little example. So suppose you want to solve 1, 0, 0, 0, you know, x, so ax equals to, let's say, uh, 2, 0. Okay. Then what this says, in order to solve this, you have to find a particular solution. And I don't know, let's just guess, guess that xp is 2, 0. And indeed this works, because 1, 0, 0 times 2, 0. Well, that is 2, 0, which is, yeah, what we want. And uh, then all we need to do is just solve the homogeneous solution where ax equals 0 just means 1, 0, 0, 0, x equals 0, 0. But that just means that x1 equals 0 and then 0 equals 0. And so x, which is x1, x2, which is 0, x2, which is x2 times 0, 1, that is our x0. Namely, set of multiples of vectors, set of multiples of the vector 0, 1, and then this theorem tells us that x equals to x0 plus xp, so if we want to solve ax equals to 2, 0, that equals to uh, x2 times 0, 1, and you just add it to your particular solution. So it's a nice way of solving ax equals b, but you might say, oh, this is so silly because we can already solve ax equals b directly, which is true. Um, but as I said, this is more useful in theory. And before I continue, let me prove this. So suppose x solves ax equals b. Consider y, which is x minus xp. Because you have your particular solution, let's see what happens if you subtract it. Then let's calculate ay, because i, l-m-a-o. So that's a of x minus xp, that's ax minus axp. But ax, because solves ax equals b, that is b, and xp is a particular solution to our equation. So it also solves our equation. So it's b minus b, which is 0. So ay equals 0. So y is a homogeneous solution. In other words, y equals to x0 for some x0. And therefore, by definition, y was x minus xp that equals to x0. So a general solution is just in the form xp plus x0. And conversely, if x is of this form, then it also satisfies ax equals b, so therefore those two things are equal. 
it's a cute proof. And first thing I want to mention is it sort of tells us what solutions of AX equal B look like. Because they're just kind of two cases. Namely, um, suppose a particular solution doesn't exist. Then there are no solutions of AX equals B because you can't even find one. But suppose there is a particular solution. The question is, what do solutions of AX equal B look like? Suppose this is X naught, so the solution of AX equals zero. That what this theorem says, to solve AX equals B, you just take the solutions of AX equals zero, let's say X naught, and you just translate it by the particular solution, which is xp. Because what do we know? We know x equals x naught plus xp. And I think this is super interesting because what does that tell you? It tells you again solutions of ax equals b geometrically, they're either the empty set or they're of the same geometric nature as AX equals zero. Because whatever that is, if it's a line, if it's a plane, what this says, this will still be either a line or a plane. And in particular, I found it very interesting, if you know multivariable calculus, there's something called a level curve of a function. So given, let's say, a multidimensional function, let's say the parabola, then you can consider level sets, and in particular level curves. And in this case, the level curves are like ellipses or circles. What this is telling us for, if you kind of graph AX, suppose this is the graph of uh, F of X equals AX in multiple dimensions. What this is telling you is that the level curves they all look the same. So they're either lines or planes. So if you had to graph the level curves, it would always look like that. Or it would look like that. You see, you don't have this phenomenon that you see sometimes in multivariable calculus where the level curves look different. Like sometimes you have stuff like that in multivariable calculus. But in linear algebra, no. It's either empty or the same geometric nature, which I think it's pretty. Um, that's one thing. And also, well, it also explains why linear equations can never have two solutions. Because, you see, AX equals zero. I mean, exactly two solutions, that's what I mean. AX equals zero has either one solution, the trivial one, or infinitely many solutions. Because we also know a of 2x is 2a of x, which is still 0. And in particular, if x is non-trivial, 2x is a different vector. And then 3x is a different vector. So for ax equals 0, you have infinitely many solutions, or just one, the trivial one. And what does this say? It says if you solve ax equals b, because x is xp, plus x naught, it either has no solutions if the particular solution doesn't exist, it either has just one solution, that's if this solution is trivial, or it has infinitely many solutions because you're adding infinitely many vectors to this xp. In particular, it could never happen that you have exactly two solutions because uh, if you want, if ax1 equals zero, equals b and ax2 equals b, then a of x1 minus x2, it's the zero vector. And you see this one, if it's just a trivial solution, it means x1 equals x2, which is just one solution. Or uh, it means that uh, you know, x, ax, x1 minus x2, it's like infinitely other many things. So it could be infinitely other many things. All right, that's one consequence. And also, one thing I want to talk about, there's a neat thing 
which actually says, and it almost seems unbelievable, but suppose you solve ax equals b. Very important, in this case, a is a square matrix. And suppose for one b, you find that there's exactly one solution. If ax equals b has, actually, uh, at least one solution. So if you have a square matrix and AX equals B has at least one solution. Actually, no, no, sorry, let me rephrase it. If this has exactly a, exactly one solution, so suppose you solve AX equals B for one choice of B and you find this has exactly one solution. Then it turns out AX equals B has exactly one solution for every B. Which seems almost you know, too good to be true, but it is good and it is true. And the reason is, suppose this has exactly one solution. We know x equals to x naught plus xp, where p is that one solution. The only way this could have exactly one solution is if x naught is trivial, because otherwise we would have infinitely many solutions. What is that saying? It says that basically we have to have that the null space of A equals to the zero vector. Because the null space is like the kernel. It's the one that controls everything about A. And because we have a square matrix whose kernel is zero, A must be invertible. Because what this is saying, it says left multiplication by A is one to one, but A is a square matrix, so left multiplication is onto, so left multiplication by A is invertible, so A is invertible. And how does and because A is invertible, how do we know that this has exactly one solution for every B? Because you just multiply by A inverse. And this is your exactly one solution. And it cannot have more than one solution because then null space of A would be non-trivial. Amazing. That's why it's one of my favorite theorems. And also, last thing I want to say is that this is true not only for matrices, but also for linear transformations. So if T is a linear transformation, and you try to solve, let's say Ty equals F, then Y is equal to a, the homogeneous solution plus a particular solution, where Ty0 zero equals 0 and Typ equals F. And in fact, the reason this might look familiar is because you may have seen that in differential equations. Suppose you want to find a general solution of y double prime minus 5y prime plus 6y, let's say equals e to the x. How do you solve this? You first find a homogeneous solution. y double prime minus 5y prime plus 6y equals 0. And if you solve this, you find a homogeneous solution is a e to the 2x plus b e to the 3x. And then you find a particular solution. 6y equals e to the x. And you do this by using either undetermined coefficients or variation of parameters. And what you get is, let's say, uh, seven minus five. So the, I think you get y particular solution it's like one half e to the x. So I just guessed that yp is c e to the x, and I just solve for c, because you get two, uh, two c e to the x equals e to the x, so two c is one, c is one half. And then what does this theorem say? To find the part, um, to find the general solution of ty equals f, Y, the general solution is then just given by Y naught, which is the homogeneous solution, 
plus a particular solution, which is 1 half e to the x. And this is not surprising because linear differential equations are linear. They correspond to linear transformations. I want to say linear, linear transformations, but those are just linear transformations. And then you solve your equation like this. That's why linear algebra isn't just applicable in linear in algebra. It's also applicable in differential equations and analysis and other fun stuff. All right, I hope you like this AX equals B excursion. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.